everybody. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean. And today I'll be guiding you through our core and stretch express class. So we got 30 minutes. We're gonna start standing. Two different sets that are gonna challenge the core, all of the areas that are, that are running along the spine pretty much. We got some standing work. We're gonna get our heart rates going just a little bit. And then we're gonna finish on the floor doing a little bit more for our lower body. All right, if you would like to use some light weights today, if you have like maybe some three pounds or lighter, or I have these weighted gloves that are a great option for those jumping jacks and the moves coming up in the beginning, that's something you might consider doing. If you're looking for a little bit more of a challenge, if you're just here to relax, don't even worry about it. So we got one minute till we get started. If you're here early, I encourage you to get up, make sure your space is cleared and ready for you. If you can put some music on, you're gonna win some energizing music today for the moves we're gonna be doing. Just so you keep going. Ah, take some big deep breaths. Make sure you have that water nearby. There won't be any specific water breaks for today's class. But please help yourself to water as you need it. It's that time. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting standing today, but do have some space on the floor available for you. Go ahead, plant your feet on the floor. Get some rolls through the shoulders, just a couple in one direction. And then go ahead and change the direction of those shoulder circles. All right, maybe heel toe those feet out a little bit wider. We're gonna take a big bend of the knees, three breaths, inhale all the way up. As the lungs fill, fingers stretch to the sky, exhale. As lungs empty, fingers come back down to thighs, two more. So just taking the time to move with your breath. Maybe you're moving a little bit slower, maybe a little bit faster, last one. We'll step those feet back together. Let's go ahead and warm up those hips just a little bit because that's going to come up in the beginning of this workout. So planting one foot down on the floor. Maybe your hands are at your waist. Maybe your hands are at your chest to keep the lift. Or maybe you need to even walk over to something and use it to help you with balance. We're just going to do a couple kicks forward. Work to keep stretching the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. Chin neutral to the chest. Just kicking at whatever height works for you. So maybe you're getting some lower swings. Take a little squeeze of that glute to the back. Let's go ahead and switch legs. So hands at your hips can help for balance as you move away from using maybe a desk or a chair. And then hands at your chest are gonna be a little bit more challenging. Remember you're working to keep that head up towards the ceiling, not leaning too much to the side as you just start to open up and warm up your hip flexors. Plant that foot back down. This time we're gonna go for a little tick tock. It can help to use your hands in the opposite direction of your legs, getting a little squeeze at the side, feeling it through the side of the glute. Again, stretching that head up towards the ceiling. Let's go ahead and switch feet. Make sure you're still breathing, not holding that breath, that lift of the chest and draw in of the core, challenging your balance here. Makes you use those abs a little bit more. One more in this hip opening warm up. So lift that leg up, bend your knee, open it out towards the side, tap down in the range of motion that feels good for you while your hips stay forward and bring it back in. Let's get two more on this side. So I'm not turning towards the side, just moving that leg. And let's get three on the other side. Hearing some crunching and cracking. Keep that weight in your heel here. Don't let it come too much towards the toe. And then just go ahead and shake it out. Shake out any tension you might be feeling. Goodbye, Uncle Buck. All right, let me tell you about the three moves that we have to start out with. Move number one is a jumping jack. So if you wanna go for a lower intensity today, still intentionally bringing those arms up and over and tapping that leg out towards the side or a traditional jumping jack is your option. This is gonna be 
45 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. We got three rounds that we're gonna get through without a break, without an extra break between rounds. And then we'll stretch it out a little bit more. Move number two, similar to our warm up move. We've got a standing toe touch and then the Frankenstein like we just did. Standing toe touch, open those feet a little wide. Stretch your arms out to the side. Draw your belly in as you come on down like you would for a good morning with a nice flat back. And then reach towards one of your toes. You can stretch your arm up towards the ceiling in a windmill. Pull yourself back up using your core. And then whichever toe you touch down towards, kick forward. And then switch to the opposite side. Find that forward kick. And our third move is going to be a squat into a knee drive. Knee drive out towards the side. Feet can be nice and wide. You can do a goddess squat or a regular squat. So you're going to come on down, press up through the heels, knee drive. Squat, knee drive. Or maybe it's more towards the front. Get that cross body drive instead of bringing it out towards the side. Find what feels good for you. We're going to do each of them three times. Starts in three, two, one with your jumping jacks. Begin. Try to land light on your toes and intentionally bringing those arms all the way up overhead. You can get creative with your jack if you want to. Maybe out to the side and then forward. Maybe you're having some fun today, feeling a little punchy. You can throw in a little twist and a forward punch. Any kind of jumping jack or step out that feels right for you. You know I get scared jumping in my apartment. That's what the look on my face is. All right, 15 second break. We are gonna open those legs a little bit wider than shoulders distance. Extend your arms out to the side. Make sure you're not collapsing through the chest. So chest is open, but no overarching of the back. Slight tuck of the pelvis, here we go. Hinge forward, touch that toe, or reach towards it, and then kick that leg forward. So make sure between each one that you plant your feet. Might wanna do a couple a little slowly, just see how your body feels today. There's a lot happening right here. There is our forward hinge. Maybe you're just hinging forward and lifting yourself back up. Maybe actually touching your toe is a little too much for you today. If you can, do that forward hinge and add in a little knee drive instead of that kick forward. Or maybe you just press up gently onto the toe. Yay, all right, coming up next are our squats with our knee drive. You ready? Open those feet one more time. No pressure of the hands against the head. Chest is open and we begin. Weight in your heels, press up. So you're working to land carefully with control as you put your foot back down towards the floor. Work to not slam that foot towards the floor. If you wanna be a little bit more intense, you can always add in a little jump squat right there. Again, working to land with control, keeping that chest up. Keep breathing. Finishing up round one right now. Two more to go after this. Find one spot, focus your eyes. We got balance work happening right here. Some single leg motions today. Awesome, shake it out. Ah, Coming right back to those jumping jacks. <coughs> Excuse me. Three, two, one, jack it out. The second half of this class does not have cardio. Do I need to tuck my shirt in? I'm gonna tuck my shirt in. Remember, you can do whatever you wanna do with these jacks. I'm making, I'm making a box right now. arms all the way up if you can.
Yes. All right. Next up, coming back to our alternating toe touches and then that Frankenstein kick forward. Even if your Frankenstein kick is low, work to bring your toe up towards your hand as opposed to bringing your hand up towards your toe. So as you kick forward, you're really trying to get that kick high. Take your time with each movement right here. So that forward hinge and then that twist, turn back, Frankenstein kick. If you need to have a slight bend in your knees, just like you might for a Romanian deadlift, that's okay too. Take that little press through the heels as you lift yourself up. Moving slow just means that you're really using those abs. Awesome. We got our squats with knee drives next. Here we go. Squat down. Get that big knee drive. I'm working to bring my elbow behind my knee. The goal here in this knee drive, decrease the space between your lower rib and your hip, keeping that chest up and weight in your heels. Remember, you can make this more challenging by adding in that hop, by taking out any sort of pauses between movements. One more time through everyone. One more time with jumping jacks, standing abs. Here we go. Three, two, one, jack it out. Just keep moving, that's the most important thing. However intense your movement is, just getting up from your chair, doing something. In the middle of the day, treating yourself to this before or after work. Movement is medicine, so congrats to you for taking a little happy pill right here. Pretty easy to swallow. All right, next up we got those standing toe touches. Open those legs. Think about it too, the wider you open your legs while still pressing the outside edges of your feet to the floor. Yeah. Uh, the easier it is to reach down towards the ground. If your feet are really close together, there's a long reach to get towards the ground. You feel that a lot in your hamstrings. Feel it a little bit less, a little less of a stretch with those legs a little bit further apart. Make sure that chin is staying neutral to your chest. So you're just hinging from your hips and then kicking that leg. Yay, all right, we got those squats. Squats and knee drives. Three, two, one, here we go, squat. Add that hop if you want. Can you drive that knee a little bit higher here? How can you challenge yourself more in round three? Maybe you move a little bit faster. Maybe you just press up onto your toes from this squat. I do realize I added in an extra squat there with the squat jump. I liked it though. So I'm bringing it back. Oh my gosh, 
splash, grab yourself a sip of water. And let's make our way down to the floor. Actually, wait, let's not make our way to the floor yet. Let's take a moment to stretch out that lower body. So go ahead, bring one leg forward. Bring the opposite leg back. Make sure you can get that back heel down towards the floor. If you've got a wall or a desk that you can press against to really feel that big stretch through the calf of your back leg. Slow your breath down. Enjoy the sweat starting to, uh, to drip off your body now that you're not moving. Two more breaths right here, and then we're just gonna switch those legs. Awesome. Keep those exhales slow to slow your heart rate down. Can you squeeze your glutes and take a little press forward of the hips to get out of having your hips all the way behind you to be as straight of a line as you can be here. Press through that back heel towards the floor. Let's get a nice little stretch of our hamstrings here and then we'll stretch our quads as we get down. So inhale those arms all the way up. Exhale, rain or swan dive forward with your abs pulled in. Fingers come down towards the floor. Inhale into a half lift. Find a big flat back and exhale down into your forward fold. Let's do that two more times. Take a moment to gently shift the weight a little forward into the balls of the feet if you had it all in your heels. Feel more of a stretch as those hips go up towards the ceiling. And then with the weight back into your heels, gently roll yourself up. Inhale your arms all the way up overhead. Oh, gross, sorry. Exhale, rain or swan dive down with that belly pulled in nice and tight. Inhale up into a half lift, flat back, stretch through the crown of your head. Exhale yourself back down into the forward fold and shift a little bit more weight into the balls of your feet. As you lift those hips up, feel the stretch along the back of your legs. Weight back into your heel, bend your knees if you need to. Slowly roll yourself up. Inhale all the way up. Exhale forward, fold down towards the floor. Inhale into your half lift. Squeeze shoulder blades towards each other. Exhale, belly still in. Head releases down towards the floor. With your hands on the floor, keep your feet on the floor and then pedal uh, through your knees. Just bend one knee and then the other. Feel a stretch through the glutes, the hips, a little into the lower back. Awesome, let's make our way down onto the mat. Have a light weight nearby if you choose to bring a little extra challenge to the lower half of your body. We're now gonna shorten the length of our movement. 30 seconds of work, just 30 seconds of work. We have two different moves. So you're gonna lay on your side here, relax your head on top of your arm and you can use your top arm for a little bit of balance. Make sure you're not rolled too far over on towards your glutes. So work to have those hips stacked. You're going to inhale, lift your top leg then lift your opposite leg to meet it, and exhale slowly, lower both down. Top leg, lower leg meets it, and slowly lower both down towards the floor. We'll do one side and then roll over and hit the other. Our next move is gonna be a combo of a fire hydrant. So if you want, you can take a weight and tuck it behind your knee. You're gonna do three different motions from tabletop. So only one leg is gonna move as you bring your knee towards your elbow, a little rounding of the back in a crunch, then come back into tabletop, fire hydrant, tabletop, and then a glute kickback. So just moving through those three moves at the pace that works for you. Starting off with that hip work, three times through of these four moves in three, two, one, begin. Relax that head down towards the floor. Lift your top leg, lower leg comes up to meet it. Slowly lower both down. Top leg, lower leg meets it. Slowly lower both down. Those feet don't have to come together. 
just making the best effort that you can with the body that you have today. Really work to be in control as you're releasing yourself back down towards the floor. Three, two, one. Awesome, let's roll over onto the opposite side. I will keep facing you to be polite. Awesome, relax that head down and begin. Top leg, lower leg meets it. Release both down towards the floor. Better to keep that head down on the floor also so that your spine stays in line. I know there's a big uh, urge to lift that head up, but try to resist that urge. Once again, make sure you're not rolling all the way back onto your glutes, staying on the side hip. Yay, roll over, come into tabletop, whichever leg you would like to start with. If you wanna tuck that weight behind your leg, here we go. So drawing that knee in towards your elbow, back to tabletop. Fire hydrant, tabletop, and then a little glute kickback. Use your exhale to find that depth in your range of motion at each point. Try not to lean too much to the right or left. Stay nice and even. Getting a little abs, hips, and glutes here. Switch that weight to the opposite leg. You ready? Draw that belly in. Begin. To the elbow, fire hydrant, glute kickback. So depending on your ability today, maybe just staying balanced and doing these moves is enough. If doing the move is easy, try a weight behind your leg. Find that challenge for you. Awesome, come on back down. Let's get into that hip work again. And begin, top leg, lower leg meets it both lower down. Maybe you're able to get those legs a little bit higher here in round two, a little muscle memory. Really use that hand to help you stay balanced. Not like a death grip to the floor and you're not rolling towards that hand either. You're really working to stack the side body as much as possible here. Just a little bit of stability. Awesome, let's come to the other side. If you're really still struggling with this move, just work to get that single leg lift. You can just lift that, begin top leg and lower it down. And if you need to separate it into one leg at a time, that's okay, next round through, you can work to lift just that lower leg, which is honestly pretty hard. All right, so top leg, lower leg meets it. Slowly lower down. Yay, roll over. Let's get into those fire hydrants again. Whichever leg you would like to start with. Because we're going to get them both. Get those hand spawns under your chest and begin. To the elbow, putting out that fire, and into the glute. Using your breath to find that full contraction. Maybe you even hold for an extra second. In each position, make sure ooh, you're not just using momentum to move your leg. Switch where the weight is. Last one in round two. Ready, begin. Y'all, there is some like action happening in the hallway today. So I apologize for all of those loud sounds from the hallway. Thankfully, we are almost done here. Go ahead and lay 
lay down on your side one more time. Let's get the last of this hip work in. Three, two, one, begin. Upper leg, lower leg meets it, slowly lower down. Or you're just working to lift that lower leg because you did the top leg last time. Taking a bend of the front knee can make it a little bit easier to access getting into that lower leg if you needed to separate things out. Way to go. Let's roll over to the opposite side. Take some time to build that strength to find some depth in these moves. Begin. So if you're barely lifting your feet up off of the floor, but you're lifting those feet up off of the floor, you're still doing something. You're probably working even harder just figuring out how to fire up those muscles than someone who's able to get those legs really high. So props to you wherever you are today. Just keep going. Keep that challenge up. Awesome. A roll over, come into tabletop. Put that weight behind your knee. Plant those hands, spread your fingers out wide, draw your belly in, and begin. To the elbow, to the fire hydrant, glute kickback. Man, my quads are so tired today. I feel that at the very top of this glute kickback. Trying to stretch that knee towards the back wall and then draw a line up towards the ceiling to really get that lift. All right, last time to work to decrease that space between your rib and your lower hip as you draw your knee towards your elbow here. Begin. So feel that little crunch in your abs or hopefully you feel it. Last move of the day. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. You're so worth it. Bring a smile to your face because you just finished. Great. Go ahead. Release the weight from behind your legs. Let's take a moment to sit back on our glutes. So coming into kneeling or if kneeling is uncomfortable for you to sit all the way back, just actually kneeling. Take a little circle with those wrists in one direction, in the opposite direction. Go ahead, place your hands on the floor, but this time point your fingers towards your knees and then go ahead, exhale, begin to release your heels toward and your hips towards each other and then inhale, press yourself back up. Get that big stretch on the, the forearms, the back of the arms, the wrists. One more time in this direction. Awesome, go ahead. Plant the palms on the mat again, fingers facing towards each other, and just take a little shift from side to side. As you shift all the way to one side, really uh, extend the separation of your shoulder through your hips. Feels great in the side of the body, and also a little extra stretch through your wrists. Then go ahead, open those knees wide, start to walk those hands forward, send your hips back towards your heels, relax your head down towards the floor, enjoy some child's pose. If it's too much for you to keep those arms all the way extended, take a generous bend of your elbows. And if that's still too much for you, go ahead, send your fingertips back towards your heels and allow those shoulders to separate, shoulder blades to separate as shoulders come towards the floor. You can even turn your head to the side to get a nice little stretch in your neck. If you turned your head to one side, take a moment, turn your head to the opposite side, get a couple breaths in there. Awesome. Let's roll over on 
onto our backs. I know we got some stretches into our hamstrings before, but let's get a nice stretch into those quads today as well. So keeping that lower back glued down towards the mat, gently draw your knees towards your chest, but not so much that you sacrifice your lower back towards the mat. Maybe your knees open nice and wide. Get as much of the back of your head and neck flat on the mat as possible. Two more breaths here in knees to chest pose. Then go ahead, take your right hand, reach over on top of your left shin. Take your left hand, reach underneath of your left leg for your right foot. As you bring the sole of your right foot towards your glutes, work to gently release the outer edge of your right foot to the mat. As it gets there, you don't have to keep holding on, especially if that's too far of a reach for you, but start to stretch your knee towards the end of the mat and the leg that you have down on the floor you should feel a stretch in your quad so just depending on your flexibility and how tight you are today maybe without even getting the outer edge of the foot to the floor you start to feel it in your quad and if you need a little bit extra work to release as much of the outside of the right leg oh to the mat as possible and then i assure you you shall feel it Change. Carefully lift that lower leg up. Make sure there's no flinging back to knees to chest pose. As smooth of a transition as possible. If you want to gently rock yourself side to side, give your lower back a little massage before we get the opposite side. And then replant your lower back. Sacrum still touching down towards the floor. This time left hand comes on top of right knee. Right hand reaches underneath, cramps hold of the left foot. If you can or else you're just working to bring that left foot to the floor. It's okay if you cannot grab hold of it because as you stretch your knee down towards the end of the mat, you will feel the stretch in your quad. You might even find in the future you want to use a, a strap or something to help you bring the sole of the foot closer towards the glute so the knee points directly down to the bottom of the mat to really intensify. The quad stretch right here. Take two more breaths. And then carefully release yourself back to knees to chest pose. Make some circles with your ankles in one direction. Make some circles with your ankles in the opposite direction. Then roll over onto one side. Let's press ourselves back into tabletop. Go ahead, tuck your toes under, send your hips up towards the ceiling. Once more, pedal through your heels. Last of the stretch in your calves. Again, walk your hands to your feet or your feet towards your hands. Take a big breath in your dangle. Transfer the weight to your heels, bend your knees. Slowly roll yourself up as you get to the top. Stack your shoulders over your hips. Inhale your arms all the way up overhead. Reach up and exhale slow as you can, as slow as you take that last breath to release your arms down by your side. And that's it. We're done with core and stretch for today. Hopefully you are feeling a little bit lighter. Proud of yourself also for coming to do a workout in the middle of the day if it was accessible to you. And even more proud of yourself for making time to do it on your own if you're catching me at a different time. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Any questions or concerns, please reach out and we'll see you again soon.